is the date set for sentencing. The court has had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. With respect to the report, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of the people? Yeah, if there is a minor correction on page one under the original charge, it should be telecommunication service, malicious use. The final charge is attempt telecommunication service services, malicious use. All right. And nothing else on behalf of the people, Judge. Any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of Ms. Montgomery? I know, Your Honor. All right. Anything with respect to sentencing on behalf of the people? Your Honor, um, looking at the recommendation for a 12 month period of probation, um, I'm asking the court to adopt the recommendation from the probation department. Um, in I see that they also uh, recommended 12 weeks of anger management, which is fine, Your Honor. Other than that, um, I have no other, um, nothing else on behalf of the people. Ms. Montgomery, I need you to adjust your camera so that your full face is in the camera. All right, thank you. Counsel, anything on behalf of Ms. Montgomery? Yes, Your Honor. We are asking that the, uh, that this case be considered for delayed sentencing, Your Honor. Uh, my client um, is attending school. Uh, she is also asking for some reduction in the fines because she's unable to pay the fines requested financially, Your Honor. Uh, she, uh, she has uh, aspirations to higher education, and we're asking that this court would consider delayed sentencing allow this matter to his to uh, allow this matter to be dismissed if she completes those requirements your anything uh anything else counsel no your honor and would, would miss montgomery like to make a statement on her own behalf yes your honor um your honor um thank you for allowing me to speak today and I would like to tell you that I've always been a productive member of society and I have a full-time job in the healthcare field. And I also have an associate's degree of associates of arts and business from WC3. Um, I've taken a plea under the advisement of my attorney and I would like to apologize for being here today. And also, um, as in, as regard to the uh, alleged victim, um, there's uh, was never an uh, there there was there will not be an issue with contact because there was never a personal or a professional relationship, and I just ask that you just uh, take mercy on me, Your Honor, and thank you. All right. Um... I have a question before I proceed. Ms. Ritter, did this start out as a felony or was that originally a misdemeanor? It's originally a misdemeanor, Judge. Okay, so that means I took the plea? Correct. Okay. All right, so a couple of things um, that that is concerning me this morning that I'm gonna address. I had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report I do see that there was a no contest plea taken. And then um, when I look at page four, um, when I first read um, the police description of the offense, the police description of the offense says that the complainant stated that she received a phone call from the defendant and a heated argument ensued. The complainant said during the argument that the defendant threatened to burn her house down and kill her children. The complainant said that she has an active child protective case against her now because of the defendant calling and making false claims against her and her children. That's the police description of the offense. 
So then I go down to the defendant's description of the offense. And the defendant's description of the offense says, on the day in question, I was at work. I never talked to the complainant on the phone, nor threatened her. She is lying. Um, and then a little further down, it said the last sentence, it says, I don't know this lady and I never threatened her. And then today, when the defendant made her statement, she said, and I wrote it down, that I took a plea on the advice of my attorney. Now, I asked if it started out as a felony or a misdemeanor because I needed to know uh, whether or not I took the plea. And on the day that I took the plea from Ms. Montgomery, I'm gonna tell you what happened. You all said that Ms. Montgomery wanted to take a plea. And then I said, okay. And then I told Ms. Montgomery, Ms. Montgomery, I'm gonna share my screen. And on my screen, you're going to see your constitutional rights. And then I said, have you had an opportunity to review for yourself or to go over with your lawyer, your constitutional rights? And then I don't remember what answer she gave, yes or no. But whatever answer she gave, at a minimum, I then said, do you understand that this is a misdemeanor and you have a right to a trial? However, if I take this plea from you today, you will be giving up your right to a trial. And then she would have said yes, because that's the only way I would have moved on to the next part. So then she said yes. And then I said, has anyone threatened you in any way or promised you anything to get you to enter this plea today? And then she would have said no, because that's the only way that I would have moved on. Um, so I was a little, you know, perplexed when she said, I took this plea on the advice of my attorney and I don't know this person and I never seen this person and, or I never talked to this person. Now, something is, is a miss, okay? Um, <laughs> something is a miss and A person who says they have aspirations of going, you know, professional aspirations, I don't think that person would take a plea to something that they didn't do on the advice of their attorney um, and risk having a criminal record for something they didn't do. Especially in a situation where, as I'm reading the pre-sentence report, it appears that if the matter had proceeded to trial, I don't know if the telephone conversation was recorded. I don't know if there's a recording of the telephone conversation. I don't know if someone else heard the telephone conversation and therefore there's an ex another witness to this conversation. Because if I didn't do something and it's on the telephone, I would be 1,000% sure that there is no recording, that there could not possibly be a recording because I didn't say or do what they accused me of saying or doing. So let, I, I said all that to say this. You can, you, can, you can speak denial from your mouth. You can say, I didn't do it, but I don't know, but I just took a plea because my lawyer told me to take a plea. And if that's what you did, that's foolish because your lawyer not facing jail. Your lawyer not facing a record. And then why would I take a plea on the advice of counsel if I know 
that I didn't have a conversation. And therefore, I know that there's no possible way that there's any proof that I said what I said. I, there could not be, like I said, a recording. There could not be a witness to the conversation because the conversation didn't take place. So Ms. Montgomery, I'm gonna accept the recommendation for probation, but what I need you to understand is I don't care whether you say it, you did it or not, you pled to this thing. You've taken responsibility for it. And I see in the pre-sentence investigation that on two occasions, you did not submit to a drug test. You came to 36 district court and for whatever reason, you were not able to successfully uh, submit to a drug test. They told you to go to affordable testing center and you did not go. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. The things that I'm going to say to you today as to what you need to do on probation, these are not optional. I'm not asking you, do you want to do them? You either want to do them or you want to go to jail. That's how that's, that works. You either want to do them or you want to go to jail. Now, I don't know why you didn't go take that drug test, but mm -hmm. you better hurry up and go take it. You better hurry up and, and, and take that drug test. Put your hand down. It's my turn. I asked you, did you want to say anything? You better hurry up and take that drug test as soon as I put in this order. And then everything that I order you to do, you need to do it because you need to understand this. Probation is an alternative to jail and jail is an alternative to probation. This is a misdemeanor. It is punishable by some number of days in jail that I'm not aware of because now she's she's um, pled to attempt. And then it's punishable by some number of days in jail and up to $500 in fines plus costs and up to either two years or five years uh, probation depending on uh, the, the jail term. Okay, so I am going to accept the recommendation for a 12 month probationary period. And I'm looking at her criminal history and it is um, uh, nothing with respect to her criminal history nor this specific charge that would say to me that she does not qualify for the delayed sentence. So I am going to also uh, accept the recommendation for the delayed sentence. Therefore, at the conclusion of the probationary period, if you successfully complete probation, uh, then the matter will be dismissed and removed from your record. But if you come and approach this probation from a standpoint of I didn't do anything and I pled to something that, that they barely probably had proof of uh, because somebody told me to, that don't even, uh, uh, again, that don't even make sense to me. But nonetheless, um, you did that at the advice of your counsel based on the evidence that was going to be presented against you. The 12 month review date will be Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. The court is going to set a midway review for, well, not quite midway, but one, two, three, four. I'm going to set a review for October the 26th. At 1.30, let me just double check. Yes, at 1.30 on Zoom, and you have the following terms and conditions of your probation. You shall not violate any criminal law of any governmental unit. You must not leave the state of Michigan without the consent of this court. You must make a truthful report to probation on a monthly basis, and you must notify probation immediately of any change of your address, phone number, or employment status. You will pay the following fines, costs, and fees. You are going to pay 
$210 mandatory cost, a $300 fine, no restitution, oversight fees at $35 per month for a total of $420 and a $35 pre-sentence investigation fee. The total fines, costs, and fees are $933. You do have the duration of the probation to pay that amount, but you cannot be discharged early from probation unless you have paid um, the full amount minus whatever oversight fees are remaining. So if you, whoops, if you get discharged at six months, you would have had to pay $723. You shall not use or possess any illegal substance. You shall not use or possess any marijuana without a valid medical marijuana card. You shall not use or possess any opiates without a valid prescription and letter of explanation from the doctor. You shall not drive without a valid driver's license. You shall submit to a mental health evaluation. You shall submit to random urinalysis at least once per month. You shall have no contact with Brianna Major. There's a recommendation for 10 days of community service. I'm gonna reduce that to four days of community service or an equivalent of yeah, 32 hours. 